Backstage, co-main event winner, Joseph Benavidez, second round finish, and this was the second time you've defeated UCA Formiga. Before we get into the actual finish itself, where was he different between the first matchup and tonight? Um, in his other fights, I saw him really just becoming more comfortable with his skills and his game plan, like execution. You know, when you're at the top, I don't see like crazy changes, like, oh my God, now he's like this crazy boxer. He just really adjusted to use his skills better. And in that first round, I felt what I thought I'd feel is how technical he is with his distance, how safe he is with his distance and timing, controlling distance in and out very good. You know, I would take one step in, he'd take the right amount back to counter, you know, and it'd come in like uh, distance control was uh, really good. So, you know, our first fight was two minutes. It was good to mix it up this time. We got in a little grappling situations and got to do a little of everything in there. You mentioned the grappling. He is known as an expert grappler. That's what he's good at. That's his bread and butter. How did you feel in the exchanges with him? I was so glad we got to grapple because in the uh, post-fight thing with the uh, commentators, I told him, taking me down is like taking yourself down. And they were kind of like, this guy's a jiu-jitsu black belt. Like, if he takes you down, he's glued to you. I'm like, trust me. Like, this is like taking me down is like taking yourself down. And I was glad we got into it. And he actually got me down. And what happened? I turned it around, put him on his back, and uh, it was great. Got into his into the mouth of the beast, you'd say, like gave him my back. He took me down, was on my back, and that's where I got the reversal, came out on top. And uh, like I said, I felt really comfortable being on the ground with him, especially on top. But even on the bottom, I, I felt it's impossible to grind me out there. So it was good to at least show that. And I think it got him tired as well. Did you feel uh, the blood going into your eyes at all? The, the cuts are small, they only have one or two stitches, but how much did that affect you, if at all, during the fight? I think I just smeared it. No, no, you're <laughs> oh, okay, I'm good, okay, okay, good. Um, you know what, I honestly, at first I thought I got poked in the eye, and it was really blurry, and it felt scratchy, maybe it was just like a graze, that's how the cuts usually happen. Um, no, it just got kind of like blurry for a while, and I thought I got poked, and then obviously the Zog, the referee didn't stop it, so I was just, you know, business as usual is what you got to do. And then I didn't know I was cut until I got back in the corner, and they said it was just a small cut, and I was like, oh, I thought I got poked in the eye, so it was it was nothing. Okay, well, your striking is what ended up getting it done in the second round. You attributed that to obviously drilling, but also Sean Tompkins, your late yeah. coach there. Um, that's something that I heard you were drilling in the locker room before you even went out there. Oh my God, that kick I landed on him. Like I said, the man who taught me it, the late great Sean Tompkins. Shout out to him. But me and my coach now drill it like every time, right there on the cage, just the way it happened. If you put a camera in our locker room before, we were drilling that right when his back's to the cage. And you know, when you throw that right hand, they can't really back up because there's a cage there. So you set up and roll out with the left kick. And uh, it just landed perfectly, started the flurry. I think I came back with the flurry after that, a straight left that was landing the whole night. And uh, took my time finishing because I knew if he was hurt, He'd be desperate to spin or do something weird. So just took my time. And once I saw him cover, I flurried. And uh, oh, it was the best feeling. <laughs> you got the finish. Um, Henry Cejudo, apparently, I have not seen this for myself, but per Dana White, said that he would like to fight you next. Um, apparently, Aljamain Sterling said if he needs to be passed over for you to, to get that shot first, he's OK with that. Dana White said that's the next fight he would like to make. Henry Cejudo, obviously healing from a surgery, but when do you envision that? What do you see that rematch looking like? Man, the first fight was incredible. Uh, one of the hardest fights of my career came out in a split decision. We were after each other for 15 minutes. I know it was one of the hardest fights for him as well. So I'm glad the cards have came to you know bring this fight again because I think we deserve another uh, fight. And even after that round, people are like, oh, we need five rounds of that. Now he's gone on an incredible run. Ton of respect for what he's done there. And I'm still in this division, man you know, plugging away this will be my third title shot in it. And I'm, I'm excited. It's the fight to make. It's the one that makes sense 100 um, percent in these two smaller divisions right now. And it was always a, a fight. It's a, it's crazy the way the road happened, but it's always a fight that I knew would happen again, should happen again. And, you know, it's the right thing to do. I know it's it's the hardest fight for him. It's the hardest fight for me. And it'll just make it that much sweeter. Well, they call you Joey two times, so we'll see what happens there. Hey, congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Thanks.